I'm recording this for Bizrat Hashem for their program on learning the Shas in one year, and I did that. Somebody might say, well, why did you do that? Why would you put in so much time learning the Bavli Shas in one year? I get great inspiration from the Dubna Magid, who is a great communicator about Torah in his book, and Ochel Yaakov, in explaining the opening verses of the Torah, where it talks about in the beginning, Hashem created the heavens and the earth, is a great insight for why somebody should want to do the Shas, why a Jewish man should want to do the Shas, and why a Jewish woman should want to encourage her husband to go learn the Shas, and to go learn all the scripture necessary in order to build the foundation, in order to start to go work on Gemara and Mishnah and Talmud. So Dubna, Dubna Magad says like this, he says that the Torah is really in three parts. And he says, as an allegory, when Hashem is giving the tablets to Moshe, and again, Hashem doesn't have hands, but the luchos, it's as if it was split into thirds, where the hand of Moshe was on the tablet, there was a part that didn't have any hand on it, and then there was a part that had Hashem's hand on it. And again, Hashem does not have hands, not anthropomorphic, we don't believe in that. But, again, it's allegorical. The idea that Dovin Magad says is that the Torah has the portion like what Moshe Rabbeinu had his hand on, which is the Torah, the Torah about the 613 mitzvot. It's what you will do, what you will not do, and what was received by Moshe. He then says, and this is the part like what the Shas has, right? It's the part that is concealed. It's not for everybody. It's for the people who put in the work to go learn it. And that is the Torah that has the secrets the explanations of the 613 mitzvot, the halachot on how it works, how it's put together, why you're doing the mitzvah, and the deeper parts about the tradition on everything about the, the sage's explanation about what Moshe Rabbeinu got. That is the concealed Torah that the Dovina Magad says, and that in itself is worth doing. It is beautiful, it is rich, it is exciting, it is intellectually stimulating. And then there's the third part. The sages say in very poetic language that this is reserved for the tzaddikim who sat and learned and put in the time to toil. This is going to be the type of Torah that exists either just learning Torah with, with Hashem in Shemayim and or later on when we have the, the, the explanations from the Mashiach, Ben David, and, and all of that Torah that comes. And this is saved away, as they say, like from the grapes created in the six days. That's, what, that's how the sages phrase it from Berahot. That that's what the, the people who put in the effort and the time, that's what they're going to be learning. That's saved for later. Now, I want to be in the category of people who are sitting and learning today, now, the secrets, all of the details of how the laws are put together, and and what's going on with the Torah and Jewish law, how to start thinking about it. That in itself is a worthwhile endeavor to spend a lifetime on. It is a beautiful lifetime endeavor. And that is why I learned the Shas in a year with Bizrat Hashem's program. One of the minor Masekdot talks about learning the Gemara. And in it, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai says, and this is in Avot de Rabbi Natan, he says in it that somebody should not learn the Gemara unless they really understand the scripture. In other words, they are understanding the part that the Dubna Magad says, which is talked about like with Moshe Rabbeinu's hand, that this is really the Humash. This is the Torah. This is the written Torah. In other words, you need to sit down with Rashi, sit down with the Torah, and start going through, get an art scroll, start going through it with a commentary by Rashi and the Ramban, and, and start looking at it, start getting a sense of it. 
And after you have that foundation, then you can start to look at Mishnah and the Gemara. Every Jewish man should put effort into doing it. Find a Daf Yomi program and do it. And I want to highlight something that I think is interesting. The end of the Shas, in Needham, I guess around page 67, 68, 69, talks about a story that seems like, yeah, whatever, right? But nothing is accidental, nothing is whatever in the Gemara. It's very serious. And the end of the Shas talks about something, another reason why it's worthwhile to go learn the Shas and how to start thinking about life itself and why you should care about it, why I care about it. There's a story with Atana who was approached by a bunch of Greeks from, from Alexandria, which was a city that was founded by Alexander the Great. And who was Alexander the Great's teacher? It was Aristotle. They come and they give 12 questions to the Jewish sages. And they're really a dig at Judaism. And it's really, says the Marsha, on three of the 12 questions, really they're highlighting the differences between Judaism and Greek thinking, Greek philosophy. As the Rambam explains that Aristotelian philosophy is the height of all of the thinking of the, of the non-Jewish world in terms of just raw intelligence and what you can derive through just sitting and thinking, right? Judaism doesn't have that. We have divine revelation to get access to different kinds of knowledge, right? Greeks don't have that. Questions like, how, do you, how does somebody make a, a boy? If you want to have a boy child. This, by the way, if, if you've learned in college, like, the bi uh, Aristotle's biology, you'll see really what they're asking, right? They're asking, how is the species propagated, right? And they're asking other questions like, uh, from Nicromassian Ethics, which is also written by Aristotle, questions like, uh, how does somebody get rich, right? And that's one of the questions they ask the Jewish sages. How do they get, how does somebody get rich, right? And they're highlighting that, you know, Hashem has a, a different idea in, in, in Aristotelian thinking versus Jewish thinking. In Jewish thinking, we have a God that is actively involved in the creation. And in the Aristotelian thinking, you have a God that created something and it runs and it's very much hands off. That's after he created it, it's like a watchmaker that the, the watch just runs. Judaism doesn't have that concept at all. And also with the propagation of species, right? Aristotle is saying that, oh, well, the species are just sort of put out there and they, and they run, right? In Judaism, we're saying, like, well, no, you have a God that's interacting. You can pray. You can pray for a son. And that's, again, another, another difference. Another question that they're talking about is they're talking about Aristotle's four tables, right? They're saying, oh, well, Lot's wife, Lot's wife became a pillar of salt. And, you know, was she something different? Was she still a human uh, after she became a pillar of salt? And the Greeks say she was still a human. The Jewish sages are saying, no, she became something else. Shem is actively involved in the creation and actively created her as that. They have a follow-up question. They say, well, is she, is she Teme? And that's also another difference, right? There's no idea of Tuma. Another question that they have is resurrection of the dead. Right? They have no such concept. It's, it's completely alien in, in Greek thinking. Why would the sages end the Shas like that? Because the Jewish story... The Jewish philosophy, the Jewish way of life is fundamentally different from everything else, and it should be. And if you're doing it the way the sages say, the way the halacha says, you are promised a better existence, really a better existence. And that is why I encourage every Jewish man and every Jewish woman to get into a structured learning program. Go to a seminary. There are continuing education seminaries for ladies that are older. You can find them online in Harnof. Also for men, go to a yeshiva. Start learning in a yeshiva every day. Work and learn part-time. And you can start to get access to this way of thinking that is fundamentally different and beautiful and real. And it is worth doing. And that is why I learned the Shas in a year with the Zerat Hashem's program and why I encourage every Jewish man to start getting into serious structure to our learning because it will make your life better. You have my word, it will.